Hi, Sagittarius. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for July of 2021. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julia Michas in San Francisco. And Sagittarius, if Juno's relationship retrospection period is bringing you face to face with decisions you just don't want to make, you might want to get some perspective from a lifelong love reading. You can find a link for that in the YouTube description below. Well, there are a lot of reasons to relax and enjoy this July. First of all, Mercury retrograde is over, which is fantastic. Uh, secondly, both of the moons this month that I have to report are harmonious only. There isn't a lot of stress involved with them. And thirdly, Juno is still retrograde and we are involved in a relationship retrospection, but at least Juno is not involved with those moons in a stressful way, which brings emotions down to, you know, a dull roar instead of possibly some of the intense emotions you might have been feeling with it last month. So this Juno relationship retrospection period is happening in your first house and you might even be taking it personally as a statement of how good of a partner you are. You may be doing some self-examination and asking yourself, am I a good partner? And also, is there room for me to grow in this relationship? It might feel pretty personal. And, um, and if it does, uh, you might wanna check out the video that we made about Juno retrograde. It is in um, the June 2021 news playlist on our YouTube channel. Um, but suffice it to say that you might be feeling that your relationship is bursting at the seams and that you need more room to grow. And, uh, and I think that this month, if you sit your partner down and have a frank conversation about it, that um, you might be able to move the needle on that. Hey, Julia, what is up with Mercury and, uh, and other players in uh, this month's chart for Sagittarius? Well, Sagittarius, I'll tell you what's up. So Mercury, we're still happy that he just finished up his retrograde cycle. However, he's still moving a little bit slowly. We're still kind of coming out of a bit of a shadow period. This all happened in your seventh house, the house of partnership. Um, so when Mercury is in the seventh house, it means that your best ideas, because that's what Mercury represents, our mind, might come from bouncing them off a partner, whether you have a business partner, whether you are hiring a consultant, or whether it's your romantic partner partner too. Then by July 11th, Mercury is going to move into your eighth house. This is the house of shared resources from everything like inheritances, loans, mortgages, um, investments. Um, and it's also a house that really, really represents research, you know, digging down to the bottom of things. So your mind might be very probing now. It might be, you might be strategizing about money in general, as well as maybe wanting to do some deep diving, some research on anything, whether it's in your professional or your personal life. Now, a lot of activity going on in your ninth house. Uh, Venus and Mars is here, but I'll start with Venus first. Uh, Venus is the planet of art, beauty, and relationships. And when she's in the ninth house, the house that represents education, represents travel, um, it means that you'd be, you could be getting more pleasure, more sort of fun, especially if you're learning something in school. Uh, it's, it can be a great time to uh, go on a trip, go on a pleasure trip. If you're single, then you might get a crush on somebody who comes from a really, really different background than you because the ninth house also rules foreigners. Um, then on the 21st, Venus is going to move into your 10th house of career, a wonderful time period for getting along well with the authority figures in your life, like parents, teachers, bosses, uh, etc. And also a really good time for, you know, maybe having a little extra luck, a little, you know, getting along well with people at work in general too. Great transit if you do anything that's Venus related, like customer service, diplomacy, working with people in the beauty or art industry as well. Then Mars, uh, that planet of action and activity, is going to spend the majority of the month in your ninth house. It'll leave the last couple of days of the month, but it's, it's mainly in the ninth this month. So that means that you could be putting a lot of energy into ninth house matters. Again, that can be um, schoolwork, that could be a trip. Um, that ninth house is a very expansive house. So if you feel like you're, there are too many circumstances or duties or obligations that are trying to keep you in one place, this could be a very restless period. 
period. Um, also in fear in school, you might run into some conflicts perhaps with teachers or other types of frustration among you know, the university or school setting. Um, and then at the tail end of the month, Mars is gonna move into that 10th house of career, bringing all of its Mars energy there. Um, but we're gonna cover that into a lot more depth in our next uh, series of horoscope videos. Yep, next month. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think that the relationship retrospection period is really supported and helped by that Mercury activity that you were talking about, Julia. Yeah. Yeah. Having it be in the seventh house and then moving into the eighth house is going to really facilitate probably some wonderful conversations. And having Venus move through the ninth too just seems like it could really facilitate growth. Mm. So that's a really nice um, form of support there. We have a couple of moons to talk about. First of all, a new moon in Cancer here in that eighth house, which is the realm of intimacy. And we're calling this moon random kindness because a new moon is like the planting of seeds. And the sign of Cancer is, well, it's all about mother love and nurture and care. And so um, this is a really great moon for planting the seeds of random kindness, just doing nice things randomly for people. Uh, this particular one suggests that uh, because it falls in your eighth house, that is the house of intimacy, suggests that right there in your relationship with the person that you're closest to, this could be a great time for, um, you know, bolstering them psychologically, um, deepening that intimacy, and just pouring a little of the milk of human kindness right into the deep nooks of your partner's soul. Hmm. they're probably needed the most um the next thing i want to tell you about is the fact that chiron which has been traveling along through your fifth house uh is going to go retrograde this month and there you'll see it happen boom there's the little red rx symbol that means chiron is retrograde chiron's been traveling through this house for some time possibly healing your inner child uh, awakening your ability to play and, um, and your creativity too. Uh, this is a long-term transit, but you might feel some sort of a pivot or shift about it around July 15th when Chiron goes retrograde. And um, if you wanna know more about Chiron transits, you could find out more about them in the video we made about it on uh, our July 2021 news playlist. Next thing I wanna mention is that the sun goes into its next sign, which is Leo. So Leo season is beginning. This brings the spotlight to your ninth house of growth and expansion and travel and the exotic. Um, and the ninth house, it, this is kind of a mirror of that sign that Juno is passing through, which is Sagittarius. It also, I think, reflects some of the themes Julia was talking about with Venus being in this house earlier in the month. In other words, there's a link here between relate, relationship and relatability and travel in the exotic. So um, yeah, expanding and growing uh, is, is more fun and easy to do with a partner. So get your partner on board with your growth and get on board with your partner's growth too. Um, then the last thing I want to mention is that we've got a full moon coming and it's on the 23rd, but this is a better way to view it here on the 24th, because here you can see that moon is in Aquarius and it falls in your third house opposite the sun in Leo in the ninth house. So while you're focusing on growth and expansion with that sun there in the ninth house, don't forget to nurture yourself and others with a little good communication. The moon is moving through the sign of Aquarius during this full moon. We're calling this one community support. So you might have some really powerful and empowering conversations with people in your community, friends, networks, your tribe. So place yourself among your tribe and have conversations where you can just fill each other up with, um, with the really good feels. And that's what we have for you today, Sagittarius. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to share our videos widely, subscribe to our channel. You can find us on the web at pandoraastrology.com where you will see our monthly forecast and our horoscopes, our services page with the readings that we do and classes on offer as well. Until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.